I love this Notion template because we can easily track income and expense transactions. For example, I've received $1,000 this month, so I'm going to log a new income. I'll register it as freelancing, enter the amount of $1,000, assign it to my personal account, and categorize it as freelancing. So, I'll select the freelancing category, and since I received it today, I'll set today's date. Now, we can see in the total balance that we had 4,712, and now it's 5,712 because our net worth increased by $1,000. Alright. Now, if we check the personal account, we have $1,643 because earlier we only had 643, and since I added 1,000, we now have 1,643. Perfect. Also, since I've spent some money, I'll register a new expense using the New Expenses button. I'll name it Transportation, the amount spent is $200, and I'll deduct it from the personal account. I'll assign the transportation category and set today's date. Perfect. Alright. Now here we have the Bank Account section and the Payment Platform section. Bank accounts are the traditional bank accounts that we all have, and payment platforms are online platforms. So, on this side, we have traditional bank accounts, neobanks, savings accounts, cash accounts, and debit or credit card accounts. On the other side, we have payment platforms like PayPal, Payoneer, or Wise, as well as cryptocurrency platforms, e-commerce platforms, and digital payment systems like Zelle, Venmo, or Cash App. Great. Now, I'll show you how to set up a credit card account with its billing cycle. This card will have a limit of $1,000 because that's the credit limit the bank gave me, and it has a start and end date for billing. As we can see here, the $1,000 were added to the balance. We don't have a way to log that as income here, but we can go to the income section and record it. For example, I'll log it here as credit card reset. The account will be the credit card that I just modified, and I'll categorize it as credit. Perfect. Now let's move to the loans and debt section. Here, we can track all the loans we need to pay, as well as the money owed to us. For example, this section shows how much we owe this month and this year. As we pay off these loans, we can add expense transactions using this button, and I'll register the housing loan. I have to pay $1,494.79. It is going to be paid with my personal account, the loan is the housing loan and the date is today's date. We can also track money owed to us. For example, I lent $200, which had a 50% interest rate, so the total became $300. It has been fully repaid, so the payment progress is 100%. The receivables indicator is at zero because there's nothing left owed to me. Excellent. Now, let's go to the main dashboard. I like to save a bit every month. In this case, I'll transfer $200 from my personal account to my savings account. Click on New Transfer, I'll name it Savings. It's going from my personal account to my savings account. Perfect, we've transferred $200 from personal to savings, and the date is today's date. Alright, now let's look at how to set monthly budgets. Let's head over to the budget page, and here we can see some indicators that show our monthly budgets, what we've spent so far, and the remaining budget. I already had $200 set as a budget, but now we can assign more budgets to expense categories. Budgets are limits we assign to each expense category. For example, in transportation, I'll set a $300 limit, and in health, a limit of $150. Now our monthly budget has a limit of $650, with $200 spent so far, leaving $450 remaining. If we go to the main dashboard, we can also see these indicators in the budget module, and we can access the budgeted categories in the Categories tab under Budgeted Categories. Here, we can see the limits for all categories. For example, we've already spent $200 in transportation, which was the expense we logged earlier. Perfect. Alright, now let's go to the wish list. Let's head over to the wish list, and here we can see all the items we're either saving for or paying off in installments. For example, I'm paying for the guitar, phone, and laptop in installments. Down here, I have the items I'm saving for, and here are the items I'm paying for in installments. Let's log a new payment for the guitar, click New Payment, and type Guitar Payment. This will be an expense transaction for $250, which I'll deduct from my Payoneer account and associate with the guitar. Excellent. 
Now I'm going to create a savings transaction for this couch. Savings transactions are income transactions, meaning I'm adding money to an account to save for a specific item. For example, I'll save for the couch, saving $200, and I'll add that to the checking account with today's date. Perfect. Now let's look at how to track subscriptions. On this page, we have a record of all the active subscriptions we have and the ones that might be archived. For example, I've had these subscriptions before, but right now, I only have Spotify, Netflix, and iCloud. I'll log a new payment for Spotify, even though I still have 23 days left. Click here, type Spotify payment, the amount is $10, and I'll pay that with my Payoneer account. It's for the Spotify subscription, today's date, and the billing cycle is monthly. So, I go to the Spotify subscription, and I still have 23 days left, but now 30 more days have been added since I've already paid. So, it will expire on December 13th. Now we see that we have 53 days left on Spotify. Great. Now, let's see how to track bills. Let's go to the bills page, and as you can see, we have access to the bills we frequently pay and other archived bills here. For example, I'll log a payment for electricity, which is due in 10 days with a fixed rate of $115. Click here, I'll name it electricity, the amount is 115, it'll be deducted from the checking account, the bill is for electricity, today's date, and the billing cycle is monthly. So, we go here and we change the due date, not to the 31st of this month but to the 30th of November. We can see that we already have 40 days left. Okay, in this section, we have a view of all the stocks we might have. For example, we can log any publicly traded stock like Google, Apple, or Microsoft. Here we have a real-time chart showing stock prices. Right now, we're looking at Apple's prices over the past week, and down here, we have the sectors our stocks are categorized in, shown as a pie chart or in a table. Now let's go to the report section. Here, we can find reports grouped by transactions each quarter. The last transactions I logged were for the last quarter of the year, which is Q4, and as you can see, all these transactions are reflected here. We have incomes, expenses, subscription transactions, bills, wish list items, and loans. That's great! We also have templates for 2024, 2025, and even 2026. If I want to have an overview of the entire template, I can go to the main menu, and in the main menu, I can access all the pages that make up this template, all neatly grouped together. If you want this template, I've left the link in the description for you to download it.